Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Boardsy, and this is going to be a review of the world's lightest mouse, the Zaunkunig M1K. This weighs in at only 22 grams, and it's a fingertip-only mouse that lacks a scroll wheel or side buttons. Um, and the cherry on top is that when it was sold, it was $250. Um, so you might be like, why? Um, and I'll explain. Um, this has honestly been an insane mouse to use. I I've used it for way longer than most mice I review, given it like a few weeks of use now, um, because it was just really fucking hard to adjust to. And before I get too far in, I do want to mention that this mouse was sent out for review, but since it's not really being sold anymore, it's basically the only way to get it. Um, so yeah, but I guess the first thing I want to talk about is the shape of the mouse itself. It is purely fingertip only. You are not, I mean, I, do you want to do a grip like this? Um, this is probably the only viable claw grip on the mouse. Palming it, um, it's just not going to happen. But fingertip, um, you can do like basically any type of fingertip you're familiar with, and it will work on this mouse. The clicks have pretty nice comfort grooves. It is comfortable. Um, for the first few days I was using it, I, I just could not get used to the shape. Just the feeling of a full mouse um, is a lot more natural to me, and presumably everybody who is used to using full sized mice. Um, but after that like first few days of the learning curve, I, I still felt like I was playing pretty average. I felt like I was missing something. And then I received this mouse pad. Um, it was actually like a botched sample that Lethal Gaming Gear sent me. It's made out of melted umbrella fabric. I'm going to review it soon, but it is an absolute mud pad. And I realized that the mouse was so light that I just wasn't able to perform well with it on like fast pads like Artisan um, Hien and Hayate Atsu. Um, but then I got this mud pad and I used other slower pads like the GameSense Radar and I started to perform well. Um, I felt like it gave me like some sense of stability, which I just needed with such a small and light mouse using fingertip grip. But even on this pad, the mouse still feels extremely fast. It has these custom made hyperglide dots. Um, which were manufactured specifically for the mouse, and they are exceptional. Um, but the mouse is so light, and it has these small feet, um, so it makes sense that the glide is fast, but it's still very controllable. And these are just the best stock feet on any mouse, without a doubt. Um, and I would say that the shape, if you're like, you, if you've been using fingertip for a while, if you have a mouse like the Ultralight 2 Hot ES, something like that, um, you'd probably be able to get used to it. I think that it is a better mouse than the HSK. Um, I was kind of praising the HSK, but I just hadn't tried this. It's obviously like a way better fingertip mouse. Um, also, I think the HSK just got fucking canceled. What a shame. Um... <laughs> But I think a question that a lot of people have is like, can a mouse be too light? And I think that this is genuinely the best option like to test that right now. And I don't think that this mouse is too light. It's definitely a lot harder to get used to. And I haven't like seen it directly proven that you have like a higher skill ceiling. So it could be that it's just harder to use and you're going to wind up playing the same. Um, but I was just able to like move this mouse around so quickly compared to any other mouse. Um, just like solely because of the weight. Um, it's kind of fucking nuts. I wish I could like just explain how light it feels. Like normal mice just don't balance on a finger like that. And I definitely don't believe that lighter equals better, but I did think that I was going to be a lot worse with this mouse than I was. Um, because with the HSK, I could just never get used to tracking. Um, but something about this mouse made it a lot easier to be more stable. And uh, I'm telling you, having a fucking absolute mud pad gave me a lot of control as well. Um, next thing I want to talk about are these clicks. Um, they actually use Japanese Omrons. And just like with the carbon fiber shell, it's a completely unique click experience. I'll do a sound test um And obviously these are the only two buttons, so you would expect them to be good, um, but it's nice to note that they are. They feel really like sharp almost. It's a completely unique experience, like I said. 
and the button quality is good there's legit like no noticeable pre-travel there is a bit of post travel as you can see um, but it's nothing that's really bothered me in game or anything but I actually did break the first copy of this mouse um, it's kind of complicated but it, the first copy wasn't sent out by the company but then I broke it and then they sent me this one so very confusing um, but I actually broke the right mouse button just by like putting pressure on it like in this manner while playing Crunker. it was very awkward um, so I really can't speak to the overall quality of it but this copy feels great but I'm not going to be fucking doing any like vigorous tests on this mouse I do not want it to break on me I hope that is uh, understandable uh, but yeah this mouse does not have a scroll wheel or side buttons um, so for that makes it useless for a lot of games unfortunate and this just not having a scroll wheel I did not realize how AIDS that was until I just tried to use this mouse like without having another mouse plugged in for general use it's like wow it truly felt barbaric um not having the side buttons i was able to get used to but man you you are taking your scroll wheel for granted i guarantee it but obviously this mouse was designed to be as light as possible and they just figured there's no point in having that because it's fucking useless weight um, the next thing to talk about, I guess, would be the cable. This was a very hyped up cable, um, and I get it. I'm like, oh shit, this is basically a rubber cable. Um, it is definitely more flexible than most, and when you're moving the mouse around, it doesn't feel wireless, but it's not being, like, fucking held down by the cable. Um, it's really not, like, an issue, but it's not, like, a fucking paracord or a perfect cable. It is still rubber, but it's nowhere near as stiff as, like, what you're thinking of when you think of a rubber cable. Um, it also is, like, a strand of Kevlar Kevlar Insider or something, kind of cool. Um, the carbon fiber shell, this is actually sandblasted. Normally, it's like a glossy coating, but they asked me, like, do you want sandblasted? And I was like, sure. Um, and honestly, it's been amazing. It's a very, like, chalky feeling, I guess you could say. Um, but I prefer it over the glossy one. The glossy one wasn't terrible, um, but I did sweat a bit on it. And if, you, if there's any, like, dirt, it just goes around the mouse. Well, that wasn't the case with this one. You can get an idea of how small the M1K is when you look at it next to the Viper Mini and the Superlight. It is really fucking tiny, um, but it is still wide enough for me. I, I don't think your hands could be, like, too wide to fingertip this mouse comfortably. Um, it is basically a shape that just gives you contact points for your fingertips and not much else. Um, so I understand the, like, oh, it's a box with clicks meme. Um, also, the sensor is a 3360. They say it's optimized for, like, low latency. The input does feel great. I don't I don't know if it's really just because of that or if like just having such a light mouse makes it feel different of uh, the sensor positioning it felt low at first but then I got used to it um, I feel like that's something that you always get used to unless you're like extremely sensor position pilled um, the LOD is like adjustable but I just left it on the default um, yeah I really don't know what else there is to say about this mouse they themselves understand that there is no like mass appeal for this mouse and I'm not gonna lie you have to be deranged to buy something like this you have to be far down like the mouse addiction rabbit hole and if you get one and you're expecting like an insanely light mouse that's great for fingertip you're gonna be satisfied but am i gonna tell anybody to like go for something like that over a viper mini absolutely not but with all that being said, this is probably the most unique mouse I've ever used. Like, nothing on the market compares to it. Um, the HSK is obviously, like, the closest comparison. Um, but I don't know. Maybe if they redid the HSK, it would be a bit closer. I wish I still had my HSK directly compare. Um, but this is a, like, significantly higher quality product. And as I mentioned, it is no longer being sold, so they are working on another mouse, obviously keen to try that in the future. Um, but yeah, there's no point in really like shitting on the value of a mouse that isn't being sold anymore. Um, but yeah, that's going to be all for this video. Make sure to uh, leave a like and sub if you are new. If you've been watching and you haven't subbed already, that's fucking fine. But if you're new, you better fucking sub. Um, but that's all. Peace.